All right, so this is a suggestion via a donation. Uh, the name of the video is, uh, Was the Moon Landing Faked? Uh, this is coming from uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Guys, I don't think the moon landing was fake. I mean, I wasn't there, right? Um, but I definitely hope that, that it's real, okay? That's where we are. Let's get it. Just go to the moon! Yeah, there'll be a day when AI takes over and it'll make us their pets. Whatever God is, God is not luck. Hi, I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. All right. And I'm here at Penguin UK to answer some of your deepest, most pressing questions. Let's go. Does that work? Yeah. That works. Okay. That was a good intro. Solid. Congratulations, sir. Have you really thought about what it would take mm -hmm. to fake a moon landing? Because the rocket did launch. Okay. We all saw the rocket launch. Right. Okay? So there's hardware there. They're, they're like office buildings of blueprints for the design of the Saturn V rocket. The hundreds of, th of engineering hours that went behind this and the records of those designs. Right. If you wanted to fake the moon landing, you would have to fake all of these documents. I mean, or, playing devil's advocate, or all of the documents were faked in order to fake the moon landing. Okay. And it just seems to me <laughs> it's way easier to just go to the moon. Right, it sounds like it may be. Has anyone worse. considered that? <laughs> just go to the moon. That's easier than faking all of this. So, uh, no, but yeah, we went to the moon. Okay, that was pretty easy. So mm. climate change will not make Earth uninhabitable. Right. Climate change will Certain make regions. Earth a living hell. In fact, I, I live in New York City, where in our harbor we have the Statue of Liberty. And there she is holding the Declaration of Independence. And in her left arm and her right arm is the torch. If you melt the water ice that's on, on land, the ocean level will rise to reach her left elbow. So that takes out all of New York City. Right. And A basically every other coastal city right. that we've spent thousands of years building... Uh, in the, since the dawn of civilization. So life will be very, very different. So right. the way I look at it is, uh, there, there are people who want to colonize other planets, give us an escape route. Would be nice. We trashed Earth, let's go move trash elsewhere. Another place. And hope we don't trash that. No, we're going to. Well, there aren't many places to move. Right. You'll vaporize on Venus, so you're not going to Venus. Mars... Rotates once every 24 hours. That's kind of interesting. It's tipped on its axis, as Earth is, which means it has seasons. It has polar ice caps, the way we still do at this moment. <laughs> and there's evidence of running water on its surface. So there's a chance we could terraform Mars. My favorite word of the past few decades. Yeah, but like no chance in our, in our lifetime? Like we're not going to see it, guys. You turn something that's not like Earth right, into, into something Earth. that's like Earth. Right. So then you just move there. So here's the catch. If you have the power of geoengineering to turn Mars mm. into Earth. Then why not just fix Earth? Then you have the power of geoengineering right. Right. to turn right. Earth <laughs> back into Earth. I didn't even think of that, bro. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if God exists. Deeply religious people are certain he exists. Right. He or it. Or sh yeah, yeah. There are ardent atheists who are sure God does not exist. S my posture is, particularly in the monotheistic traditions, that God is typically described as being all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-good. Yet I look back through history... Uh, in particular, there is a, I, mean, I can choose many examples, but one, a famous example is the earthquake in Lisbon, okay. Portugal. When was it? 1755, somewhere around there. 80,000 people died. By the way, that earthquake took place on All Saints Day, in the morning, when most people, Lisbon, one of the holiest cities in Europe, most people were in church. Right, where was God? 
in that instance is what he took. I think this is kind of where we're leaning. Churches were the largest structures of the day. Right. If you have an earthquake, what's the first building to collapse? The largest. It's structures. the ones that are the largest. Right. The most susceptible. So people died in churches. Then there's a tsunami that basically wiped Lisbon off the map. Either God is not all good, if we define good as being in the interest of your Common man. health and longevity, that's a pretty right, simple right. definition of something that's good for you, or God is not all powerful. But it's not clear whether God could be both of those at the same time for that event. So I, I, well, this man just logic his way out of that question. Oh. Take issue with what many people say God is. Okay. But there are other kinds of way to think about God. There are enlightened religious people who would say God is the manifestation of the laws of physics in the universe. I, I don't have a problem with that. But is God the person who that. tells you who you should mate with and on what, and what day you should eat what kind of food and what, who, you know, is that your God? That's different from this other one that maybe just sort of put the universe into place. So I don't really concern myself much with it unless someone finds a way that any understanding of God can give me insight into making another discovery. And that hasn't happened yet. Um, there are many people who will, will see things happen to them that are in their favor. They say, oh, someone's looking over me. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's they'll, a fascinating they'll just equate it. phenomenon when that happens. And what, when you analyze those situations, what you find is, is that we as humans simply have a profound inability to understand statistics and probability. It's really that simple. And uh, it's a quick experiment. Line up a thousand people okay. and give them a coin and have them flip the coin. And if whoever gets tails, tell them to sit down. So it's about half. So 500 people left. You repeat it, 250 people left, you know, 125, right. 60, 30, 15, 8, 4, 2, 1. This is it's a thought experiment. Right, right. So half the people sat, approximately half the people sat down every time they flipped the coin. Half of them get heads, half get tails. There's one person that's standing at the end. That person flipped heads 10 consecutive times. So who does the press go to? The press goes to that person and say, how do you feel about this? Well, I felt that head's energy about halfway through, and I kind of knew I was going to win. I felt, I, I saw heads on the thing. And did they interview anybody else who might have felt exactly the same way but didn't no. flip heads 10 times in a row? Because they're on their way home now. They're not there for the interview. So we're thinking that this guy had some kind of clairvoyance about his fate. Right. Or that the, he it's prayed or whatever. And so, whereas every time you do this experiment, Basically, somebody flips heads 10 times in a row. Guys, we're going to go ahead and need someone to, to do this experiment publicly. And so we don't know how to handle coincidences right. or at that level, things that are rare for you, even if they're common in total. So, yeah, no, whatever God is, God is not luck. We can demonstrate that mathematically. Ooh, solid. Personally, I guys, that's easily one of the best answers I've ever heard in my life, guys. Um, not all that worried easily about artificial intelligence and robots taking over the world. But almost everyone I know who's an expert in it, they're worried. They're all worried. I'm reminded of Ray Bradbury, okay, author of many great science fiction novel about. Mars, and, and other stories. He was once criticized. Someone asked him, Ray, why do you have all these apocalyptic, futuristic stories? Is this what you think we have in store for ourselves? And he says, I don't write these because I think that's what our future will be. I write these stories so that you know what future to avoid. And I said, ooh, that's deep. Right. So Unnecessarily, the fact actually. that we've had our share of films that show computer 
intelligence Tech taking over the taking world. Over. Right. I think it spooked us. And a little bit of spooking is a good thing. It means you'll move forward. You'll step lightly. Right. And we'll like instantly put like restrictions on things. But here's my reasoning for why I'm not as afraid as AI experts. Okay. Every manifestation of computer ability that has arisen has been parsed into some task or set of tasks that we previously had undertaken and now the computer does it. So we used to build cars on an assembly line. Now robots build cars. Right. And cars are better than they have ever been. People think of robots that'll run around and they'll have all this high intelligence. Well, go back 40 years ago, 50 years ago. People were imagining robots, humanoid robots, and then the robot would then drive your car. No, not today. The car is the robot. So the idea that you would have what they call general intelligence, some kind of entity that can learn anything and do anything and do it better than any of us, I just don't see that as the direction things are headed. We'll have tasks, we'll get some really good computer to figure out how to do it better than we can, and then we, it happens. So yeah, at I'm, the expense of everyone else, though. I'm not as worried. But if the concerns of AI experts are real and we, we need to heed them, yeah, there'll be a day when AI takes over and it'll make us their pets. Right. <laughs> we should all behave, learn how to behave better. Because the day AI takes over they're gonna pass judgment yeah. on whether humans should continue or not in this right. world. They're rendering all these other animals extinct, they're destroying the environment, they can't even be shepherds of their own fate. So, yeah, they'll just exterminate us all. <laughs> like, it's, he's laughing, he's joking about it, guys, but, but let's just be real for a second. AI itself is going to ruin a lot of people's lives, as you see what's going on right now in Hollywood with the, with the scripts, guys. As he pointed out, there were a lot of people that were that built their families right off of building cars in warehouses, guys. Right? Um, even some of like the manufactured homes are, I'm, I'm guessing, are probably soon going to go the way of robotics and AI. A lot of factories and warehouses are purely that. Why? They're more efficient than a human can ever be. Right? Like we're sitting here worried about right now, like in in, in America at least, the United States of America, um, regarding a lot of unemployment most likely going to be coming really soon as AI is booming, guys. Uh, AI is a, is a fear. For example, again, Elon Musk uh, pointed out that we should not allow AI to get as large as it, it can be. Uh, as Neil deGrasse Tyson just literally stated here, uh, AI will absolutely judge us. We are a pest, guys. Yeah, we created it. Absolutely. Um, but we absolutely also are a pest. We are just ruining the earth at every single turn we possibly can. We're mean to each other. Uh, we dislike each other for the most menial things, right? We we constantly are getting into kerfuffles with each other over nonsense. Cause, yeah, they're just going to find a computer to do what we can do better. Uh, and then it's just going to do it and then judge us instantly, right? Um, so, like, I've only seen the movie uh, Terminator Terminator 1, uh, and that movie scares me because I do think that that actually has potential for happening. Either that um, or WALL-E, that conclusion of us just sitting down doing nothing and having robots and AI do everything for us. Disney warned us, or, or Pixar warned us a long time ago regarding this thing. Guys, right? Absolutely. But all right, listen, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Do you think AI is going to just absolutely dominate us? I think so, personally. <laughs> all right, but listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day and enjoy your day thoroughly.